Hey everyone, welcome to Music is a Journey. I'm Peter Scove and today I'm going to be talking about a very sensitive and somewhat controversial, contentious topic and that is the use of AI specifically related to a video uh, from Unleash the Archers for their recent album Phantoma which was just released on May 11th and I'm going to have my copy in my hands probably in a day or two. So before I get started, I want to say that as this is a, a controversial topic, I think there are a lot of people who have some opinions on it. I know I have some regular viewers who are always uh, leave me, they always leave me comments, which I really appreciate. I do welcome any comments on this topic, whether you think that uh, AI is going to be a, a tool that we need to learn how to use properly, or if you think it is just uh, a monstrosity that we need to get rid of and uh, it has no place in our world. Or if you're somewhere in between, like you don't really have any opinion one way or the other. I do welcome all comments on this topic. However, just one little point I would like to make sure. Um, please express your opinion about the topic and perhaps not against people in particular, especially if those are any kind of, you know, hateful or nasty comments. I, I don't want people to be attacking other people. I want this to be a discussion about AI. And who knows, probably I might just get, you know, 30, 40 views in this video and nobody who cares will actually watch it. But anyway, just to keep that in mind. Okay, so what am I talking about here? First of all, the band Unleash the Archers. They have just released their sixth album called Phantoma. This is the uh, follow-up album to their 2020 album, um, Abyss, which is uh, over here, the CD. They won a Juno Award for the best metal album of the year back in I think it was 2021 the award was was given to them they are they started out as a kind of a, as more of a tech melodic technical death metal band with clean female vocals and harsh male vocals but very rapidly they evolved more into a power metal band still using a bit of those harsh vocals from uh, time to time as a lot of their albums are conceptual works with um, the different voices being used for different characters in the story. So usually the female vocalist Brittany Hayes, also known as Brittany Slays, is doing most of the vocals and then guitarist Grant Truesdale does some of the harsh vocals when certain characters in the story require those vocals. Now the latest album, Phantoma, the story is about, uh, it takes place in the future and I'm just going to tell you, I think it says that it takes place in the year uh, something like 12,089. 12, and uh, Britney Slays actually mentioned in a video, uh, in an interview on um, Jasper, Belgian Jasper's channel that that year actually is the Holocene year. So the Holocene um, period started 12,000 years ago. And I think more recently we've actually decided that we are now in the Anthropocene. But that 12 actually marks 12,000 years ago when humanity went from being uh, hunter-gatherers during the Ice Age into uh, starting to form settled communities and agriculture. So that's just why the, the date actually seems so far out in the future, but actually I think it's like 12,089 and I think what it actually means is is 20 um, 89, so not that far out in the future. It is about a, a dystopian society. Uh, climate change has caused the, the world to fall into a very um, difficult place to live. Human beings live in these green glass domes or bubbles, whatever, and um, AI uh, robots um, are being used everywhere. And one of the characters achieves self-awareness through its uh, accumulation of knowledge and it sees humanity as being um, this this kind of apex of, uh, of, uh, of a goal to achieve to be like human beings uh, based on its knowledge from the internet and however once it encounters what human beings are really like uh, it's a very disillusional moment. Um, just I just moments ago, in fact, I haven't even finished watching it yet, but on the YouTube channel uh, Tank the Tech uh, he's he's doing an interview with Britney Slays and at the 34 minute mark they start talking about the the album Phantoma and the use of AI and so on. Uh, one thing Britney mentions is that she actually wrote this story originally already two three years ago so before chat GPT started up before apps like Midjourney and whatever before like it's just been in the last year and a bit that AI the actually third generation of AI now has actually really started to um, be used widely everywhere. So when she wrote the story, she was thinking back to movies like The Terminator or Blade Runner, um, data from Star Trek, and I, I would mention perhaps like Matrix as well. 
So she was not um, thinking about what we are thinking about now, like right now when we talk about AI being used in our society. So um, the character was a, a robotic character that became sentient and um, yeah, maybe similar along the lines of Data wanting to become human or like Blade Runner as well. So for their first single for the album, Green and Glass, they thought it would be really cool to use AI technology in a way to create a video. And what they did was filmed scenes from the video first, then they licensed the artwork of an artist so that uh, an AI could do its learning from that artist's artwork. And then they used the AI to paint over their video. And the video is actually really interesting. It, it, at first, uh, it reminded me a little bit of the rotoscoping that they used for the heavy metal movie way back in the early 80s. But as it is AI, you do see a lot of the details and the images are constantly changing. Uh, most notably, the hairline of the main character keeps moving around. But it's an interesting effect. And it seems to me it's like a, a, a nascent technology where 10 years from now, we will have like far superior video renderings in, in AI. But um, while the band were very pleased with the results and thought this was very suitable for the story and for, for what the album is talking about, they also were very, they, they thought they, they knew it could be a potentially controversial subject and so they tried to approach it as ethically as possible, deliberately approaching an artist, licensing the work from that artist and getting the AI to train on that artist's work to create their video. However, it seems that there was a, a community of people out there who are very much against the use of AI and regardless of what was said about how the video was created, immediately the AI sent up a, a flag and there was a lot of hate going around on Twitter. So I've seen um, Britney Slays talked about that with Belgian Jasper in his video. She's talking about it with Tank the Tech in his video, which I haven't finished watching yet. And um, also, what's it called now? The Metal, Metal Meltdown channel. Um, he also addressed it in his review of the album, um, the, the fuss that went on about this. So if you want to watch any of those videos, I will put the links uh, below in the description. As well, I will put the link to the video. I will be reviewing the album myself once I have it and also talking a little bit more about Unleash the Archers. However, this whole discussion about AI really got me thinking because I have used it myself just in the form of image creating apps. Um, Wombo Dream and Starry Eye are the two ones I've been playing with, particularly Wombo Dream because they put in a lot of different styles. And in early on, I got to say, it was really a challenge to try to create, um, try to get the AI to create the images I had in mind. I would enter a prompt and choose a style and get something really ridiculous. For example, this is a girl playing volleyball. <laughs> uh, and a lot of times um, the AI seemed to have very difficult uh, times rendering small details like how many fingers a person would have or strings on a guitar or a tennis racket or even lining up objects like a fence behind a person. It, it was very challenged to try to get any reasonable images that I could say, hey, that looks pretty good. But um, an important thing to say about AI technology that I think is the concern of a lot of people uh, is that AI steals from artists. Now, a friend of mine who is an artist posted a meme on Facebook a few weeks ago, and the, the illustration was a cat sitting by a lake shore with a um, fishing line in the water, and on the cat it said artist. And then behind the cat was another cat with its fishing line into the first cat's bucket, where of course the first cat is catching fish, putting it in the bucket. The cat behind is fishing from that artist cat's bucket, and that cat in the background was AI. So clearly the message is that artists are doing the creating, whereas AI is just simply stealing from the artist's creations. And as I understand it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but as I understand it, AI learns by studying millions of images off the internet so that when you give it a certain prompt, you want like a you know, girl playing volleyball or something, it then goes through its database of all images of girls playing volleyball and then creates a, a kind of amalgamate of those ideas, which is why uh, I think certain poses are very difficult to achieve. Now, um, one comment that came up in the discussion on in, in the comments of the original video, um, Green and Glass video, was a discussion about how AI is actually using artists' works. And one person was saying that of this particular video, they strictly limited the use of the work to the artist's um, work that was licensed legally. 
However, one person in the comments, I'm, I'm adding the comments that people left here so you can read them for yourself. But uh, one person then said it doesn't matter because AI gets its data from this huge database, which is just, you know, pilfering from the internet. And so it, it doesn't matter how you use it, you are still using stolen works. And then one interesting part of the discussion that came up, which which I thought of myself actually, was, you know, isn't it similar to uh, if you are a young artist and you study the works of, of people you really admire and then your artistic skills develop showing those influences. And we kind of see this in music too, where sometimes it's like a band has created a song that obviously sounds like another band's style and how much of that is a tribute or an homage to the band and how much is it just pardon me, just um, plagiarizing. Of course, if you do exactly the same thing, it is plagiarizing if you don't give credit saying, you know, like a cover song is not plagiarizing because you're obviously covering it. But we hear things like that in songs where people will use a riff or something. And if you hear it, you'll go, hey, isn't that from that other band? So uh, in that way, what's the difference between an artist who is drawing from his or her influences, their influences, pardon me, and um, what's the difference between AI? And I think the big thing is that AI, of course, is not a human conscious mind that is making those decisions. How much of my uh, mentor's work do I want to include in my own? It is just blindly um, pulling whatever it, it needs to create whatever it's the, the prompt enter. <laughs> the person who enters the prompt is asking for. Which brings me up to the idea of, of technology in general. We often see any kind of technology, be it mechanical, such as, as machines or digital or now um, artificial intelligence. Anytime some new technology comes along, there are people who are threatened by it. Uh, going way back to even the roots of the word sabotage, if I got it correctly, it's when Dutch workers threw their wooden shoes into the machine to revolt against the use of machines that were taking their jobs. Uh, in my own personal experience, I actually had a um, an extra work kind of job doing writing for a travel uh, website. And when chat GTP, GPT came out, I was notified as well as all the other writers that uh, I wasn't needed anymore. And two months later, the editor was also told he was not needed anymore. So I have personally experienced losing a job to AI, uh, not a big one, but anyway. And I think like we see this also throughout history, for example, when photography actually started producing really good images, really good clear images, there was concern, you know, will painters lose their job? Once uh, color photography came out, then would people stop being interested in black and white photography? When digital photography came out and editing images on computer became much easier than doing darkroom work, um, and even the production, the, the final results of digitally produced and edited images were, you know, in, in some ways far artistically superior to those just simply captured on film. Um, did film photographers lose their work? Well, in a way, actually, I did <laughs> because I used to submit film photographs to magazines along with articles for publication. And after a while, I was just told we don't accept film photos anymore. You're going to have to give us scans. And after a while, it was like we don't accept anything but digital now. So um, only in very few places can I actually submit film photographs. And in fact, the film market started dwindling so much that I actually gave up shooting film and I have, I've started selling off my old cameras, particularly medium and large, because it's so difficult to, to buy and have the film developed and then have anything to do with it afterwards these days that I, it's almost not been worth it. So I have been feeling the effects of the digital age, never mind the AI age. But getting back to the animosity against the use of AI, there was a guy who does some of these short videos about bass, bass guitar, bass instruments, and he mentioned the other day in one of his videos that he posted a photo of several bass instruments walking in a line, and the meme was a walking bass line, but the image had been created by AI, which he said, and it just got so much backlash from people who you know, really hated on him for using an AI-generated image. So yes, there certainly seems to be a group out there who really are against it, and there's a lot of concern. How will AI affect us, uh, particularly creators, whether you're creating images, photographs, if you're creating um, music. There are a lot of things to say. There are a lot of concerns about there not being any laws in place to protect works from AI use. We have lots of copyright laws. You know, if you want to plagiarize somebody, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. But, um, you know, what about using AI? Does, to what extent is AI actually stealing? A lot of discussion about that. 
Mm -hmm. e even the whole thing there with in, in Hollywood, you know, are, are people using AI by creating images, using actors faces, using their voices, having them do and say things that they would never do um, or using their faces and images without any recompense to the actor uh, who, you know, the image was whose <laughs> face the image is based on all sorts of things like this. So we are actually, I think, facing a new kind of revolution in technology with AI where we have a lot of issues that need to be addressed and a lot of people are rightfully concerned about those. So what I thought I would do was I would put this um, question up onto Facebook just to see what kind of responses I got. And the friend of mine who posted the, the fishing cat meme, um, she gave a really interesting response. First of all, she addressed it um, from the point of view of plagiarism, um, stealing artists work. But more, uh, she talked about as an artist, people are doubting the authenticity of her works, where even a pencil sketch now can be accused of being an AI work. And she felt that the, the most distressing thing was that people would essentially be calling her a liar if she put up some image that she had created on her own, whether a digital image or a painted image or a sketch, whatever, and simply just say, well, you did that with AI, it's not an authentic piece of work. And I thought this comment was particularly interesting because I have experienced a similar thing when it comes to photoshopping. And my first experience was back around 2005, 2006. I visited um, my hometown in Canada for winter and on that, during that period there was a particularly heavy snowfall. One night I went out for a walk and I passed a car lot where all the cars were covered in about 20 centimeters of snow, very creamy marshmallow-like uh, mounds of vehicles. And under the different lights, the sign of the dealership, the dealership's parking lot lights, the street lights, all of them having different colors, the image, uh, I mean, the scene was very interesting with different colored shadows and different lighting. And I just pulled out my pocket digital camera, compact digital camera, and snapped a few scenes and posted them on my blog at the time. And one of the people, the comment was to say, these are so obviously photoshopped. This is not the way things look. How can you say that you just took these pictures when you clearly manipulated them in Photoshop? Which was really surprising to me because I, you know, I knew I just held up the camera and pushed the button, you know, of course, composing. Um, I, I've never had Photoshop before in my computer. I don't have any photo editing software um, except for what comes with the computer which I just do to trim off vignetting that you get sometimes when you're using a wide angle lens and, and a filter where you, you'll get some little like a dark vignetting on the edges or if there's some little stray object that came in the frame which was not visible when I took the photo. That's the extent of my photo editing when I do my serious photography. Of course smartphone snaps I might play around with uh, some filters in Instagram or do some editing just to bring out the, uh, an effect for a smartphone snap um, if I feel um, I can do something interesting with it. But for my serious photography, I tried to keep it as authentic as possible. And that is because I was a film photographer for so long. You know, the photo is done when the shutter closes. So everything from composition to exposure to lens to um, camera height to any filter I might use if I felt like using one, which I rarely did, um, that was all done ahead of time. And then when the shutter closed, the image was finished. But now, um, once Photoshop started to become a regular thing, a lot of people would be in doubt of those images. So um, also related to that, I remember also posting a photo on Facebook of a sinkhole in Guatemala City, which actually came from a National Geographic web page. And one of my friends commented, well, this is so obviously Photoshopped. And I thought, how can you say it's obviously Photoshopped when it's an authentic photograph, an authentic news photograph? <laughs> so. People already 20 years ago were doubting the, uh, the authenticity of photographs. So now for my artist friend to say, well, people are, are doubting her works and suggesting or believing even that it's done with AI, um, it seems like this is not a new issue. And in fact, I have a photography book of an American mountain photographer. The book was published back in 1989. And in his book, um, a lot of the images capture extraordinary moments of natural lighting and in his book he says it's funny to hear the comments of some people at his exhibitions because people will say oh he obviously used a massive strobe or he's obviously done some manipulating of the images in the darkroom which he hadn't so even going back to the 1980s people were doubting the authenticity of the works of photographers so um, it's not a new thing <laughs> and AI is just the latest way uh, to accuse people of not being genuine in their representation of their works. 
So that pretty much covers everything that I had on my list of notes here. This is my second sheet. This is my second time making this video because I had new things to say. Um, in the Metal Meltdown video, he said that uh, while respecting the fact that, you know, we need laws to make sure that AI is used in a way that doesn't infringe upon people's artistic copyright licensing and so forth, um, AI could also be a useful tool in the creation of artworks, just as we have been using digital um, software for the creation of music and artwork now for the last so many years. He also pointed out like when um, drum programming was first used, it was frowned upon. When auto-tune was first used, well, okay, people are still frowning upon auto-tune. <laughs> um, as we use digital technology more and more, a lot of people say that the human element is being removed from creative works because we have um, less what uh, way to put our natural human expression into it if the, you know, digital editing is going to allow us to cut out those kinds of, you know, small inconsistencies that we, we produce as humans when we are either singing or playing music or creating um, visual arts. So there is that. Um, we need to protect, uh, have some laws to protect artists but we also have to accept that AI is a technology that we will be using more and more for our artistic creation. And of course, there will be people who will lose jobs. There will also be people who learn how to use the technology and actually um, create new jobs, as we have seen always with technology. Um, I'm not an expert. I, you know, as I've said, I have felt the effects of AI, I have felt the effects of digital photography, I have felt a lot of things. I can't really say one way or the other. All I say is that, you know, I have to find my way in the world. I certainly am of no power to stop anything from happening. So just, you know, <laughs> go with the flow and, uh, you know, push where you need to push and pull where you need to pull. But once again, uh, I'm not an expert. So once again, please do leave your comments. I want to hear what people have to say about this. And if it's just my usual gang of friends who leave their comments. Thanks very much, everybody. <laughs> but uh, I do welcome comments from people I don't know who normally don't watch my videos. So I did try to speed through this quickly. I'm sure I rambled on a lot, but I do appreciate anyone who watched through to the end. Um, once again, please be kind in your comments or at least be respectful. No name calling. <laughs> and uh, thank you, everyone. See you again in a video, hopefully very soon, reviewing the Unleash the Archers sixth album, Phantoma. Thank you. See you then. Bye. You are a nosebleed waiting to happen. I can't remember the last time I heard an album this freaking good. Maybe I should buy a metal trash can for my head so I can bang on it with a hammer. Who has two legs and a broom? Me? And don't ask again.